if it wasn't obvious, we're going to be talking about, well, comparing apples and oranges, essentially Superman to Batman or Devil May Cry 5 to Bayonetta 3. Now, contrary to popular belief or for people who didn't see the last video, this comparison isn't because I think one is cooler than the other and here's why. I like thinking about and trying to find answers to certain questions that are going to bug me. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who's had this question. Okay, so just so we're clear, I've put about 80 hours into three different versions of Devil May Cry 5, collectively, not each. I have a life. Bayonetta 3, I've put close to 30 hours in. It's only been out for about a week or a little bit under a week at the time of the recording. But I'm going to come back to this recording on and off to get more information from both titles. So if you notice a weird jump cut or an unusual pause, it's because I'm inserting new data or splicing in some stuff for corrections. You know, traditional editing stuff. All right, so let's get into it. We're gonna be comparing them in three subjects. Post-game content, combat, story. I'm gonna start with story first because, well, that's the one that's gonna be the most painful. So I'm gonna tell you right now, Devil May Cry 5 wins. And it doesn't win how you think it was. It's not superior writing. It wins because it doesn't hurt as much and the plot holes, although few and far between, and the inconsistencies that can come up are far, far less painful and noticeable than the Game of Thrones-like final season level of writing that is Bayonetta 3. Now, I know what you're thinking. It can't be that fucking bad. <laughs> uh, ye of little faith. So from literally the beginning of this game, we have no idea expect a lot of spoilers from this point on we have no idea why viola has decided to hide that bayonetta and luker are her parents from an alternate dimension secondly the entire area where you go to different dimensions doesn't really follow a reasoning as to why luca's even able to get there it's hidden from plain sight it has been untouched by man and the only people that have ever been able to access it or even know where it is are a lumen sages be umbra witches but luca somehow got there with no fucking flying apparatus also yeah luca is that weird boss werewolf fairy like thing you see in the trailers who's not a demon but kind of sort of moves around like one there is literally no explanation from beginning to end of the game why that thing exists how that happened to luca at all now let's move on towards the end of the story now just so we're clear i'm not skipping things on purpose or to preserve people's innocence i'm just front loading every single possible logic inconsistencies culmination before i go into devil may cry 5 and the best place to start is at the end because really that's where it gets the fucking worse so as it was mentioned in most of the trailers the final boss is a character named Singularity, even though that's not his real name and he has an actual name, but for some reason, they just call him Singularity. He has about three or four different states, if you will, and every time it looks like Bayonetta can inch out a win, he does something that allows himself to win until he can't anymore. Example, and this is where the plot holes and illogical inconsistencies start coming in. We've all been made aware of Demon Slave. Yes, okay, cool. First version Singularity, Bayonetta has Madama Butterfly turn into a red skin version of herself, have completely different combat maneuvers from the entire game, and a laser beam that shoots out of her head. And for some reason, you never do this again, and how and what the circumstances were for that to happen are never truly properly explained. It's not the same as the super versions of her characters who are running off of witch blood energy later on that you do at the end of a boss fight this is something completely different from that and it only happens with her and it's never explained or seen after this point then dimensional chaos starts breaking loose so now you're fighting on what feels kind of sort of like the moon but there's air again no explanation she can now summon every single bayonetta and john that died in the whole game and some of them were even cut out paste of concept art versions of herself not joking and they start winning but like i said he just starts letting making them unwin and they all cease to exist again including john 
Then you end up right where the game started. You fail to Earth and you land on New York. Singularity's right there. He didn't expect you to come, but you chose to come. So now you're fighting Singularity <clears throat> by yourself. Of course, Viola's there, but Viola's job is to literally not do anything till the end. And all of a sudden, the Cereza from Bayonetta 1 and the Cereza from Bayonetta 2 show up and they apologize for being late. No one knows how they got there, where they came from, and where they disappeared to. And I literally mean disappeared. So, while they all, as a team, decide to fight Singularity, something triggers them fusing together. They don't even know how they did it. There is no explanation. There is no magic technique thing that they did like with the other parts of the game with the demons. They literally started just coming inside. Ada, Ada. Oh, phrasing. They just started existing in the same space and overlapping with Bayonetta 3 Cereza. So then you start fighting Singularity again. And after that, this super form is never seen again. They defuse after it looks like they were winning because Singularity looks like he's about to break up and explode. One of the Cerezas stands to the left of her and another one stands to the right. And then the screen goes back to Singularity to say something and he starts healing. And then those two Bayonettas mysteriously disappeared. They weren't killed like the other ones were earlier in the story. They just disappeared. Then Luca shows up. Again, no explanation to why he can now, why he had that form of a werewolf thing. The other Luca, the only other Luca you see in the game, who's apparently the king of the fairies. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. Made him less crazy with no explanation. So, <laughs> I shit you not. They start double teaming him. They win. But, I guess it's like a dick move. He either decides he's gonna punch a hole in reality and suck everybody up so if in playing the if I'm gonna die, we all gonna die game, or he somehow escaped and made that hole when he escaped. It literally is not explained. So Viola's unconscious ass starts going up into the hole and Bayonetta, with her demon out, is starting to lose consciousness and the demon is about to kill her. Basically the same way, you know, John was pretty much died in Bayonetta 2 at the beginning. So Luke has to make a decision. He chose to go after Viola first, bring her down from being sucked up into that interdimensional whirlpool unconscious, but he didn't have enough time to go and get Bayonetta. But he does kill the demon with literally one shot, which is crazy to think about. Luca has that kind of power. Not playable, by the way, which I feel like is a missed opportunity. But given how shitty this story is, hey, I think he kind of ain't, ain't too mad about being left out of being playable. And he starts talking to Bayonetta's soul. And instead of, I don't know, literally doing what just happened in Bayonetta 2, letting the demons take Bayonetta's soul down to hell and trying to figure out a way with Rodan or other like-minded interdimensional hoppers on how to go down to Inferno and save the soul of Bayonetta, they decide, hey, you know what's a cool idea? You know what, I'm gonna just make out with you, tell you how much I love you and I'm gonna die with you. While their daughter from another dimension watches them die. And then out of nowhere, you get an all white screen. And now you're playing Viola in a dimensional space with no explanation, no idea how she got there. Theoretically, she was just standing still and you're fighting an evil version of Bayonetta who was supposed to be the amalgamation of all the Bayonettas that died, anger and resentment. Here's something I can't figure out for the life of me. If this Bayonetta is mad about getting killed by Singularity, why the fuck is it trying to kill the person that literally helped kill your killer? Oh my God, it's just so... Game of Thrones level of logic, maneuverability, and gymnastics is Olympic level. Mother of God. And then when you kill it, Bayonetta gets a new weapon that you obviously can't use so you beat the game. And then you get a dance sequence because, you know, Bayonetta ends with dance sequences. But this time you get three. You get a regular dance sequence. Then you get another happier dance sequence with the interdimensional Bayonetta's backing you up and occasionally Viola. And of course, you know, there's that in between little mini games during the credits. Then there's the final pole dance part. The end. What the actual fuck? I don't mean this figuratively. I mean this in the literal sense. If you told me during the writing process of Bayonetta 3, every person writing involved was doing some very powerful narcotics, I would believe you. Someone had to approve this after somebody wrote it. After a script supervisor came in, it's like, you know what? This is some grade A shit right here. Players are gonna love this. What? Oh my God. I don't even wanna recap, cause it'll physically hurt me how many issues there are. I pray to God CinemaSins does not find this video because I may inspire them. Now let's go to Devil May Cry 5 story. Look, the biggest, if you can call them that, issues relating to Devil May Cry 5 story is a simple fact of all these demon hunters 
in the beginning of the story, sitting up here, once they got out of it, Nero and V and Enzo just letting all these people get stabbed directly in front of them and turned into corpses or feeding the Clypha tree thing. That made no sense to me. You still got a gun. You're conscious. What the fuck? Oh, we're just going to let these tentacles stick here and we're going to go and, you know, fuck around a bit. Bye, people. Try not to die. That bothered me. And then there's the whole thing about, you know, Nero's quote-unquote devil trigger. Also, the whole pretending that they're stuck in the interdimensional world at the end. That could be up to player misinterpretation. It honestly could. Because remember, Virgil's sword can hop in between the dimensions. It can cut dimensional lines. So eventually, well, from what it feels like, Dante and Virgil, or maybe just Virgil, can actually get hungry. I mean, let's not forget, Dante was literally unconscious for the equivalent of about a month or a few weeks when you find him and he somehow didn't shit or piss himself and didn't starve himself to death. So from what I see, from what I can figure out, this is the definition of just lazy writing, not so much intentional plot holes or fucking with your players like Bayonetta. I can somewhat deal with those. They don't irk me to the point where I have to stop what I'm doing in the middle of the day and just think, what the fuck was that ending supposed to be? I don't have those thoughts with Devil May Cry 5. The story is very, very basic. Is it better than 3? No. As far as I'm concerned, the story and the writing of 3 was lightning in the bottle. They got fucking lucky. They found a balance of all the elements and aspects that makes Devil May Cry's cinematography and writing interesting. And ever since that game, they've never got close to it. And it shows. But that doesn't mean that they necessarily had a bunch of categories that were shitty and terrible. They sometimes did good in one, sometimes they do good, and sometimes other elements or aspects suffer for it. But all in all, if you go from the beginning to the end of Devil May Cry 5, you understand the story and you can get most of the beats. Now, let's move into combat. Look, Dante is the definition of a Swiss Army knife. And now I'm talking about Devil May Cry 5, just so we're clear. V is the definition of a summon character. He's meant to have familiar likes fight for him. Nero is the definition of this is what happens when you try to put microtransactions in a Devil May Cry game. All of his special features and functions that make him unique from every other version of Nero that there's been playable, which is literally just one other, Devil May Cry 4, are attached to unstable and breakable weapons. They're even called Devil Breakers. Later in the game, you do eventually regenerate your original hand and you regain your DMC4-like abilities. But that Devil Trigger form and that arm coming back and also having a human appearance instead of a demon appearance now. Yeah, they don't do any of the abilities associated with Devil Breaker except for like two of them. And the Devil Breaker comes in two categories. Offensive, defensive. Technically evasive if you want to think about it for that one gun that shoots you backwards when you launch it and doesn't actually do any damage. But see, here's the thing. Your enemies can break them. That's a fucking problem and it's a stupid design. But I've already made my peace with that. Plus, I've never liked playing Nero. Literally, the only thing I like about Nero is his voice actor. Literally. I've been saying it for over 10 years. I even told Johnny Young Bosch one day, you know, I don't hold a grudge. It's, he's not a real character. I, if, if I don't have to play Nero, I'm not going to play Nero. So then you come over to Bayonetta. Essentially, John does the exact same thing. So it's really just Bayonetta and Viola. Viola is a one weapon type of woman and her summon has a limited range. It's actually on a chain. So if you fight somebody that's too far away from your demon ma uh, demon slave, you might as well call the weapon back and relaunch it, but that costs magic. So how you approach a fight is a little bit unique with Viola. Her witch time, aka the ability to slow down the time and the physics of the character and do more damage and pop them up a lot easier, is only triggered as a counter during a block. So it is nice that we finally get a block option that's built in, not an accessory, for the Bayonetta series, but it's on a character with the least amount of everything. Oh yeah, and for no logical reason, despite, you know, her dad being a human version of Luca, who's not the fairy king, and Bayonetta, she gains a fairy form like devil trigger in the game, which has no explanation. No, I didn't forget about Virgil, but just to come back on the Virgil, he pretty much uses the exact same equipment he's been using since he was first made playable in Devil May Cry 3 which 
was back in 2003 or 2004 because this wasn't the original version. This was the special edition version, which I believe came out December of the same year or January of the following year. So 2004, 2003. So he's got a katana, which he can cut different ranges at and technically cut through time a little bit. Um, dual edge mix with his regular sword and an energy projection version of a sword he used to have called forced edge. And also he has his, you know, striking weapons, which are the hand bracers and the foot greaves called Beowulf, or I guess shadow Beowulf. They're all alluding to weapons that he shouldn't have anymore because they didn't want to make new fucking combat weapons for him, which makes no sense to me. It's been like 15 years, man. Come on. Virgil deserves new toys, not just new combos. So all those characters combined compared to everybody playable in Bayonetta, specifically three. It just doesn't compare. It really doesn't. Because now it's a matter of these characters, abilities and features, not just their combos, versus these characters, ability and features, not just their combos, plus Dante's style or style system. And how easy it is to simultaneously utilize everything. It may be more so due to the hardware, but because of that, at least in sake of combat, Devil May Cry takes that W. Not to mention the story element. So we already two for three. So that leaves features and post-game content. They're kind of sort of almost identical. Devil May Cry, there's your basic story chapter format. And then there are secret missions. Same with Bayonetta. There's 13 missions. Well, 14 missions, but 13 of the missions have secret missions attached to them. So that brings us to a total of 26. Devil May Cry, kind of sort of the same thing. There's a secret mission in every single stage except the final stage. You get rewards, but the rewards are better on be leaning on Bayonetta's side. There's also a horde mode in Devil May Cry 5 that has practically never existed in Bayonetta. And in fact, the co-op mode has been taken out. So their differences have kind of sort of come full circle. Now they're almost on a level playing field. That BS co-op that Devil May Cry has where if you press the pause button, you're screwed. Yeah, that alone automatically is still better than Bayonetta 3 where there's nothing but a leaderboard because essentially it's like saying oh I have zero and you have one I don't have much but I still have more than zero so yeah Devil May Cry 5 is for the most part better than Bayonetta 3 in a lot of categories or the categories that most people are going to care about which is the combat the story and post game content slash features that being said there is a strong possibility that unlike every other bayonetta that there's been we're going to get dlc and even though both these franchises aren't known for having big long epic or even worthwhile for purchasing dlc we might be getting more story modes as is implied by a secret chapter from a secret book you can buy from rodin when you play it bayonetta 3 succeeded in evolving its combat it is a little bit annoying that they took out the ability to utilize four weapons simultaneously and put it down into two and they don't advertise that anywhere they failed when they put all the elements combined together so even though devil may cry has this unfortunate horrid problem of hey let's just put you in a room and there's either going to be a puzzle or a mob you can fight and then make a barrier or as bayonetta they do that don't get me wrong but the puzzles are more diverse and the combat settings, going as far back as the first game, get more creative and diverse, especially in the first handful of stages or tutorial stages. When your tutorial stages are more interesting and dynamic and engaging than almost every combat sequence by itself in the opposites game, you need to stop being fucking safe and get a little bit exotic and creative, Devil May Cry. But in particular, you will wear the crown this day. You will wear the crown. And I salute you. With that being said, uh, this has been another exciting episode of Two Cents. I will see you guys when I see you guys.